Hey everyone, it's Classic DM, and I want to show you something really, really cool that some guys on Patreon have put together that's going to really help your virtual tabletop gaming, and it's really, really neat. It's using Unreal Engine 4 with a lot of preset cameras, overhead cameras, real-time environments, night and day cycles, snow. Oh, it's really, really awesome, and let's just go ahead and take a look at it. I want to give you a walkthrough of this stuff because I've been checking it out all weekend. I've been absolutely, completely, totally impressed. So you ready? It's called RPG Scenery. And uh, this is probably one of the ideas that I think is really going to make a big difference for people doing virtual tabletop who have a little gaming rig on the side. So when you run their application, which you get, if you're a Patreon supporter, you get a full copy of the application. They update um, lots of different packs, which are locations like map files, like ruins and forts and fields and all kinds of stuff and army camps. And you uh, run the application. It's a freestanding EXE, so you don't need to have the editor running the background and doing F11 mode like I've done before. And the first time you start it, it just pulls up one of the random shots of all the different levels and all the different environments they've created so far. In this case, it's one of the like, you know, mid-afternoon misty kind of campfire uh, fire scene with the campfire burned out and the tent in the woods. Really beautiful, right? Every time you start the application, it's going to be different. But the first thing you want to do is uh, kind of modify a playlist library. And it's kind of like making music and doing a Spotify list. But what you're going to be doing is creating a series of visual scenes to amplify your gameplay and battle maps associated with them with your ability to switch back and forth between them, change the time of day, change the snow, and all this kind of stuff. It's really, really, really awesome, really flexible. And I think I am a, a huge fan. I want to be hugely support these guys. Really, really good. So you create a playlist, we're going to call it Classic DM, right? Just double click on it. Double click the folder, and it'll bring up an interface that looks like this, right? A very simple, very intuitive, really clean interface. So on the right hand side, you have the scene library. Now think of these as game levels, like in a video game, like in Unreal, Unreal Tournament, Crisis, Doom, you know, Call of Duty, whatever you like. So imagine there was a game level in Red Dead Redemption called Forest Campfire. Well, let's just go ahead and pull it up. Kind of like in an editing program that you would edit a timeline like Shotcut or Adobe Premiere, you're basically going to left click and hold and drag the scene and put it down here in the plus sign. So at the bottom, you're creating a series of scenes, right? It's loading the level instantaneously in the background. There's no load time. There's no shader caching or any of that kind of crap. Um, the, the resolution is extremely high, but not so high that someone with not a really awesome gaming rig can't handle it. Now you're like, okay, great. This is a real-time scene. Yeah, this is not a video. This is a real-time scene. You can hit space bar and make that interface go completely away. It's like, wow, that's really neat. Look at this really beautiful scene. What else can you do? Well, you can do a lot more than that. Uh, first of all, you can go over here to map mode and have an overhead view with a grid. You're like, wait a minute. So now I have a map mode in with a one inch grid and hit space bar and there's your grid. Well, say you don't really like the grid that way. You want to change it. So you can go to this little tool setting here and change the opacity of the grid and drop that down to something very faint or change it to some other color that you think is appropriate. Like maybe you want a black color or maybe you want to pick a color from here and make it this dark, dark red color and make it a little bolder. So you can see the grid lines are changing here in the background. Let's go back to white so you can see it really well in the video. Now, you'll notice down here, there's a number of overhead views that are preset. So this one's the campfire one. Just swing over here to the right road, swing over here to the left road, and notice this is a real-time camera. So the camera is moving to preset positions in the level laid out in Unreal Engine 4. So this entire level is running in real-time at all times in the background. This isn't a video. This isn't like something where it's just a static picture, uh, and you can control everything about it. So let's go back to our campfire scene. It's kind of covered with trees. You can't tell a lot what's going on. If you look at it full screen, it would kind of look like this. And when you have the little menu items like this popped up on the screen, you want to get rid of them, hitting escape and stuff doesn't do it. Just left click in the screen somewhere. Just left click on the screen and that'll go away. So if you bring up the space bar to modify something, and you say, you know what, I want to make the time of day a little bit later in the day. I want to make that late afternoon. Let's move the sun over to late afternoon. The sun starts to set that, that campfire kicks up. Yeah, that's what you want. And then just left click in the screen somewhere. You know, you know what? Now that's getting kind of dark, you say to yourself, you know, let me just modify that grid. I want to make that grid just a little bit lighter, not quite so bold. I don't want the grid to take away from my cool scene I've got. So you may have a gameplay situation where your players are, you know, I'm using a mouse cursor here, are sneaking up on this camp. Well, that's really great. And that's making a, 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 a overhead battle map. And this overhead battle map's going to be scaled to a 1080p monitor. In this case, I pretty much I believe this is like 18 inches, um, the vertical direction, and maybe like 30 or so, 30 and a half, the horizontal direction. So in a 1080p monitor, that's pretty big. So if you're using a monitor like I am for my game sessions, this works perfectly because the grid can even be turned off if you don't want it to be there. Let's give you another idea what you could actually do here. So 
Once you change that time of day cycle, let's say, for example, like, you know what, let's make it winter. So we're going to start dragging this over, start having some snow coming over, and the shaders are going to change on all the trees, and the ground's going to change. You're like, wow, that looks awesome. Well, let's just go back and see what that looks like up close. So let's go to map mode, and this is the campfire, what it looks like in the snow. So if you want to take a screenshot or have this playing in the background while Theater of the Mind players are playing, if you're playing Theater of the Mind, you have this hooked up to an HDTV, you've got this incredible visual landscape. It's almost like a screensaver running in the background, and it's not a video. You're not playing a video from the Internet. This is freestanding on your laptop. And you may say to yourself, well, I want it to be a really, really cold. This is the wind factor here. I'm sliding this over. Really windy, so you'll start increasing the wind, start bringing in that hazy kind of fog feeling, right? Like, I, w I actually don't want it to be, I want it to be almost in, in late at night. So I've got this deep, foggy kind of vibe going on. I want a lot of fog happening, really dark. So all the fog, the, the sunlight is of the, uh, the light of the campfire is really illuminating the camp. I mean, that's amazing. That's all being done in real time. This is one of the biggest strengths of the Unreal Engine is the ability to create environments with dynamic PBR lighting, which is physical-based rendering, to illuminate scenes with particles and shaders that can affect in real time. There's no recompiling or anything like that like in the old days. So let's just take our scene of our campfire here and say, remember, we could look at this in the overhead view. There it is. So there's your campfire scene. Now, the only thing about this, I think, would be another like 1.5, 1.7 uh, change to this. It would be really interesting if you could give the DM the ability to maybe call the tops of trees with like a vis plane or something like that, like set camera height clipping plane. Um, maybe later on when they get some more patrons, like you should be supporting them, they'll be able to do that kind of stuff because then you could do things like in this situation, you can see a majority of this battle map is kind of covered with the trees as we see it from above. So it's not as useful. So when you're playing this map if you are not you know underneath the trees you can't you don't have a lot of playable area but that's only when you have a situation like this where it's really a, a strong canopy let's go back to see uh, see what this looks like from the other side so you know if you want to get an idea what that looked like from the back you have this look from the back or you can just go over here and see what does it look like from in a tree and you sneak down and spy on guys at the camp and there's no miniatures there's no 3d characters on screen because it's not a computer game this is just a scene and that's what the guys at rpg uh, scenery have done this could be used in any game you could be used this in a war game you could use this in bolt action you could use this in squad leader you could use it in any rpg D D fifth edition advanced dungeon dragons osric pathfinder the opportunity to use this is incredible you know if you have a situation where your rogues talking about like you know they see the campfire and there's some guys that seem to be sitting at a campfire late at night in the snow and they're kind of wrapped in blankets and trying to keep things quiet and they're just muttering each other one of them's smoking one of them's like a dwarf guy's holding his axe in his hand and your rogue and your party or your thief or your assassin or whatever class you're playing wants to sneak up you could show this to them and say you know this is kind of what you see so and you can actually change the you could change all the stuff. So like you may run it one day with a group of friends and have it this nighttime kind of infiltration snow setup. You might run it another time where there's no snow at all and it's just night. Or you may want to make it early in the morning and maybe you want to reduce that wind level down. So drop drop that wind level down. That'll calm down in a second here. So now we have this kind of mystical really windy kind of a early early evening the sun the, as the wind set settles down it'll slow down it takes it a second to slow down so then you have this campfire just right before dawn and that's absolutely beautiful isn't it now remember at any time you've got a battle map so at any time all this lighting is real time so anytime you can see with this situation you can see much more of the battle map and this is just one of many of these situations of many of these scenes they set up let's go take a look at one of the other ones let's go over here to this uh button here to see the crossroads right let's just pick the crossroads we're going to click on that and come on transfer now over i've seen that happen a couple times not sure maybe that's something going on with it let's go back to this mode and then we'll go to this crossroad here Oh, that's right. I was on the settings menu. Duh. My bad. User interface human error. So we're going to jack this up to a different time of day. So we're going to turn this to maybe what would be, if this is midnight, black, we're going to turn this to early morning. We're going to reduce the amount of hazy fog, right? So now it's more like an early morning day. And we're going to reduce the amount of opacity. If there was an overcast day, the, the lighting would be like this. This bottom tier is kind of controlling. You can see the depth of the shadows is more overcast. So let's say it's a little bit overcast and we've got a little bit of wind going, just a little bit to get those trees moving around. And then we have a little bit of rain and the trees are starting to blow a little bit. And then we start bringing a little droplets of rain. We can start increasing the rain. And now you have this uh, crossroads scene for your battle map with the rain coming down. And you got this fantastic 
real-time environment. So unlike I was trying before where I was capturing videos of Black Desert Online or you, I have an Unreal Map more, uh, right now that I'm using where I can move the camera anywhere is the only real thing about this you can't do. The advantage of this is the designers and the guys that put this together uh, uh, um, have made it where they can control the scene to make sure it runs really, really well for everyone. And they can pick really good artistic locations. You can even see the clouds moving and the, the time of day and the lighting change. It's really fantastic. Totally love it. So you can go over to camera mode and say, hey, what does it look like from the crossroads? Well, there's your view from the crossroads with the rain happening, right? It's like, well, remember earlier we were talking about having it with those, uh, I said, you know what, let's just change the time of day. Let's make it a little bit later in the afternoon. Maybe it's really, really raining hard. So then we got this really heavy rain and we want to really kick the wind up. Let's right? make the wind crazy mode. Now that's not going to be as realistic. You know, I've got the wind just barely set. Let's say it's like pre-Florida hurricane weather, right? So let's just, this wind will just start kicking up here and things will start blowing in the wind. So if you really wanted to capture, you know, terrible storm and you're going down the road to these crossroads, you could, you see this camp over to the right, you could have that. And the thing about it, I think is really, really incredible is pairing the first person perspective for the players allows you as a, as a GM or DM or whatever you want to call yourself, referee, to have another monitor hooked up to your laptop where everyone in the, in the room can see and you can do a lot of gameplay with Theater of the Mind without having a map. But if you do need to do a map, there is a map. And you can change the... And it's going to be the same exact scene. So while you're viewing different things from different angles, like you know, someone sneaking in and wants to see what the campfire looks like in the distance, or wants to see what it's like approaching the campfire from the road, because you can see this is the camp, uh, little campfire type area here, or what does it look like from over here, or what does it look like from the tree, or what does it look like from the back, or what does it look like up close or from the crossroads? Once you make those modifications, you're just basically affecting the entire level. So let's try another setting. Let's just tone the wind back down. Let's get the overcast sky out of control. Let's change the time of day to the middle of the day. Let's kill the rain. Let's make a late afternoon kind of scene. It takes a second for the wind to die down. You have to be patient with that. Let's give it a little bit later afternoon, right until that campfire kicks in. And one thing I like to do is I like to uh, go in and see the view close like this and tweak it here and the other thing they've included which i didn't even mention yet is there's even ambient sounds let me turn them up here a second so you can hear some of the ambient sounds playing in the background so that's really really awesome really really cool tool so i'm going to turn the ambient sounds back down a little bit there we go. So that's just one of these um, locations they've created. So what they're going to do now is just keep making more and more and more agnostic, relatively agnostic uh, locations. Now, you can set up a series of scenes, right, and then have them as a playlist. Let's say we took this, had one playlist that was, you know, this setup here. Well, I've got the winter version of my campfire, right, and I've got it late in the afternoon like the rest when the fire's kicking in and then I take this campfire and drag it down here and I got another version of the campfire that I'm going to make it be early you know what let's make it in the middle of the day but it's raining and there's a little bit of wind going on so we get some movement and it's kind of overcast so now I have three different modes of this map. I have this view of the map, I have this view of the map, and I have this view of the map saved as a playlist. So then I can go see, anytime I make changes, anytime I'm changing the configuration of each one of these items down below, I can switch to it and it'll switch to the last seen view. So if I want to have the campfire from on high in this playlist view, I can switch to this one and have the up close view and switch to this one and have the further away view but I can always go back to the map view at any time. Each, each one of the settings, it'll remember the settings that I created. Does that make sense? So in this case here, it's like really, really dark. You can't see much. So let's just show you, um, let's go back out of this. And I'm not going to save this playlist at all. And let's make a brand new one. Let's go back and click on this. And let's take a look at some of the other ones real quick. Because this stuff is really, really awesome. I really love it. It's brilliantly done. So let's just, this is an army camp. Okay. So when you load it up, it's going to pick some random location. 
you can go to map mode right away and see right away what kind of maps are available right here's a map mode of this one here you can click on configuration and choose one so there's an overhead view of the camp I'm gonna reduce the opacity of this grid down a little bit you have a view of where the outer fence is which might come in handy if you know characters try to infiltrate and get inside the camp and they see this campfire happening here um, you could go to another view at the main entrance. So say you've got a situation where your adventurers are coming down the road and there's some guards at the camp. You can put miniatures on your board like I did with my TV and my web camera and playing it over Twitch stream and playing it over, you know, I'm controlling everything with OBS and I'm, people are talking over Discord. I got this really cool scene happening. So the thing that's really amazing about that is then when they break it, then they actually get into the camp and then they have, you know, maybe outside the camp there's a big battlefield. There's a view of the actual camp itself properly with the fire, not the fire, but the fire pit in the distance. And it's all scaled appropriately. The camera distances and the heights are great. You don't have to personally kind of manage the camera or anything like that. That's just an example of one of the other ones. And then if you want to get a view up close, you know, you want to have this uh, view of the camp over here. Or what's one of the areas look like where there's some storage like this happening. And remember, at any time, you can control the time of day and this stuff. So if you want to see what this thing looked like in a late afternoon, just start changing the lighting. Let's make this late afternoon about right here. The sun coming through the trees. And let's just reduce the, increase the fogginess, drop that fogginess back down to be no fog. A little bit of wind I find works really well to make things look really nice. And you say, you know, with that setting, what does it look like under the big tent? What does it look you know, like close at the campfire? So for someone who likes to play a theater of the mind gameplay, I think it's very useful for them to have these different preset cameras to give an idea of setting the stage of the scene. Like when you first enter the camp, this is what you see. So if you designed an adventure around the levels that these guys have created, you are going to automatically have real-time scenes like this that you can describe and write to, if you're not a good writer, and you can even show the picture to your friends and you have control over the time of the day and the weather. So for example, the adventurers could run off and say this is a base of operations. They've gone on some military mission and then they, they return after you know two days of adventuring, but they just happen to return in the evening and you wanna show them what the camp looks like at night. And it might be like, oh, we wanna go talk to Captain Miller or whatever, and this is what the scene looks like at night. And then you can say, well, uh, we're gonna go talk to him over at the campfire. And I'm like, sure, that's no problem. Let's just go ahead and take a look at the, uh, let's do a campfire view. So, you know, here's your scene of the campfire. You can see there's the tents in the background, all that kind of stuff. Or you can actually just go to the overall uh, map mode of the whole map and pick one of the other preset maps. Like you just come in the front gate and guys are coming in. Or you could just go back to another view in the camp under the tree. What's it look like under here? What's it look like from the tents from the right side? I know I'm not going full screen every time, but the ability to paint the picture as a person with no artistic skill at all, by adjusting the time of day and the lighting and all these kind of elements, gives you really, really, really powerful storytelling tools for your adventures. It also can inspire you to write, you know, hundreds of adventures tailored around what you think the scene might be. So, I mean, the snow fact, the snow stuff is fantastic. I absolutely love it. So, say you wanted to, uh, say you were looking at the road to the camp, you know, and you were thinking in your mind you know what would be really neat? I want to do an adventure where these guys are traveled all across the world and they're going to come to this camp. They're going to arrive just this time of day right here. And I want them to see this cool Christmas kind of scene like this. And then you can say, well, what does it look like in the overhead map mode? Here's the overhead mode. And let's go back to map mode. Here's the overhead mode of the whole camp. You can show them the one of the other maps. Where's my mouse cursor? It's lost in the snowflakes. Here's the entrance of the snow. Excuse me. Here's the entrance. Here's the nearby field. You may say to yourself, you know, the snow's pretty cool, but I want to change the adventure to be hardly any snow at all, but I want it to be in the daytime, and I want it to be a rainy afternoon, and I want there to be a little bit of fog happening, and I want there to be a decent amount of wind, not too much fog, that may be too much, I want it to be a little overcast, and I just want to throw in a little sleet little jibble bits of snow in there too and then you can play with the time of day till you find that perfect lighting situation that you like and then go over here and see here's what the view looks like here's the map view of that and check let's do what's this look like at the entrance so as you can see that just the potential for this is fantastic the only limitation is hey what do these guys decide to make next 
do you like the ones that they've made? Um, if you're a supporter, you can always, you know, say, hey, would you make one? Like, I'd love to see them make one for a desert that would support my module that I'm making right now, the sequel to the Indigo Aces. But it's really up to them. I mean, they're just kicking this thing off. They've been cranking on this stuff since the month of March. Let's go take a look at some of the other ones just for fun. Let's just put a few of these in here. This is an island fortress one. We'll go ahead and go this into a, uh, let's go to this view here. They have this um, huge, huge island fortress. Let's just see a view of the whole island, the fort itself, the shore, the overgrowth, the pier, and let's go to the cameras. So you have all these different locations. Like this is a nice three-dimensional view to show someone like, what does it look like from this location? And if we'll just go through your full screen like this. So you say you've got an adventure where they're coming in from sea and landing on the island where there's a bunch of ruins. It's kind of like one of the Divinity Original Sin maps. And you want them to come at a certain time of the day. You want them to come later in the afternoon. You just change the lighting. You want it to be a little bit rainier. You can just set the sun the shaders and start adjusting on this as well. You want to have a little foggy, rainy, Scottish afternoon. And then you can, so boom, there's your battle map. Or you can pull up one of the other maps in the map. Here's what it's like when you're first approaching the island. Here's the shore. Here's some overgrowth that's nearby around the outskirt of the pier of the fort. Here's an inside of the fort. So you can have this interior battle that's happening in here. And then you have all these fantastic views that you can show them what it looks like. You know, the guards on top of the tower can aim down. They see you guys coming up this path. Or you come into this one room and there's a ladder. Let's just make this full screen for you. You know, you come into this old decrepit room where there's a fallen ladder on the ground. So the fact that they've taken the time and the energy to create these um, views fills in the gap. Like, is, this is a great shot here, right? Here's a shot of the whole fort as you approach the water. Say you and your buddies had a boat. You came to the fort, and you're arriving. And let's say it's not raining. Let's say there's hardly any fog, and it's a bright, sunny day. And let's say it's in the morning. So it's the early evening. Here's where the sun's first coming up, right? In fact, if you look at it at night, it even has like an aurora borealis. It's really, really beautiful. Look at this. Look at it. Isn't that awesome? I mean, look at the, mo the mood and the tone of that versus the mood and the tone of seeing this you know, earlier in the morning. Here's the time of day. This is aurora borealis happens, so clouds going by. Got a moon in the sky. I just had an idea. One thing would be really awesome is be able to set the time to continue to tick away as you're playing the game. You may be able to do that. I may not be able to say you want it to be a little bit hazy. And you want there to be a lot of wind happening. And maybe just a little drizzle of rain. It's like character creation. <laughs> so, I mean, that's the view of your characters. You know, you do a vampire mission or something from the Curse of Strahd. You have this really, you can tank this, you can take this totally normal looking keep, right? and just turn it into something that looks absolutely incredible and is really, really exciting. You're actually creating the imaginative scene in your mind right there on the spot. Let's just jack that up to, let's just kill the rain and let's pull this up to in the early morning. There we go. Get the early morning sun happening here. A little bit later in the day, the light color changes a little more white. Late afternoon. So the good thing is your players they remember once you change this once the players they uh let's see what the shoreline looks like right the shoreline where they come in here so here's what their shoreline looks like or here's what the pier looks like or here's what the fort looks like the thing is that's really great about this is once you've changed the um i like the opacity low on these once you change the time of day and set the stage the whole map changes so all the different views that you create and take a look at with the maps now are using the same time of day setting so that's one thing I think is really, really great. Very different this scene than it was before. You know, like I said earlier, if you're approaching under the cover of darkness, I mean, that's your scene there. If you're approaching, you know, atta attack attacking at dawn, you know, this is what you're looking like, right? Middle of the day, late afternoon, the sun starts to set, early evening. Really, 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 really good. Really cool. Very cool. And that's just one of the Island Fortress one. Here's one that was a bonus one. They reached a stretch goal. It's called a Light Forest. Um, this is fantastic. Let's just take a look at some of the maps available for this one. Um, this one has an overhead view. It's just a creek. This is a creek running down the middle here. Let's, and there's a hillside view, which is up here. And there's a small clearing. So if you have any kind of exterior Greyhawk, Forgotten Realms type of location, you need to do something really neat. Of course, you can change these grids to hexes, but who cares? Or if you're playing on... 
uh, roll 20 and you take a screenshot, you can turn the grid off. I like having the grid on personally. But you could then go, okay, well, let's get a view of what it's, all these different views, these camera views of what the field looks like ahead of time or what does it look like next to the creek. And that's where I think doing things like changing the time of day, you know, to early morning, to, you know, late in the evening where it's really dark. This is what, to me, it makes this project so absolutely brilliant. That right there is amazing. I wonder if you can use the arrow keys to adjust that. There we go. Let's get that moon set right there. <laughs> As you can see, you sit there and spend hours doing this stuff. It's amazing. I totally love it. Totally impressed. Absolutely totally impressed. And you could use this in everything. This one thing about it that's so awesome. I really love it. And you can change the view to anywhere else in the map. Now, here's what it looks like in the middle of the clearing. Here's what it looks like in the distance, that same field with the moonlight. So to me, I think one of the things that's uh, so exciting about this type of a project is all these guys need to do is create as many imaginative locations as possible, realistic, photorealistic locations, use Unreal 4, have people support them. They can continue to add additional packs to the stuff, and then it creates locations that will inspire players and DMs and dungeon masters to create their own adventures um, based upon what they see as a location. They can draw inspiration from these locations as opposed to having to buy a module from someone else that's, you know, $25 that is got a bunch of NPC artwork in it. It's all static and doesn't really look all that good, you know, or has like a goofy cartoony battle map where this is like a real time battle map. It's just going to run for you all the time. I just show you a couple more of these real quick. Hopefully I'm not going to get in trouble for showing them all. <laughs> but in my mind, seeing them all ahead of time is one of the most amazing things. Some of the maps have a lot of battle maps. Like this only has like a cave entrance and a little mountain passage. This is one of the earlier ones that they did. Um, we'll just leave these settings like it is. And, but use a number of diff different views with the entrance to this cave and this upper waterfall looks like. Hideout location, clearing. Let me reduce the fog down to this to almost nothing. Change the time of day a little bit. So this one here doesn't have as many battle maps, but if you need to, someone needs to understand like what the point of view is or looking over the edge and where it's off in the distance, I think it really helps you with a theater of the mind situation, paint the, paint the picture. So this is much more of a theater of the mind uh, set than the other one is. The Oak Forest one is also one I really think is fantastic. It's just gonna randomly pull up some scene in the Oak Forest. Um, you've got all these different views here, clearing, you know, foot of the hill, top of the hill, under an old oak tree, you gotta have maps for the forest, and then maybe a large clearing. Let's take this out of, out of settings mode. So you have an overhead view. Once again, I'm gonna reduce the opacity. It doesn't remember my opacity settings. So that's a minor issue. And then you know, hey, you know, just have that during a. Let's make that a snowy day. You know, that's just brilliant, doesn't it? Fantastic. And what do we got here? River crossing. Oh, that's beautiful. Doesn't it look awesome? Oh, it looks fantastic. I love it. That's just like a photograph. It's so beautiful. Absolutely amazing. Let's see what that looks like at different time of the day. This is late afternoon. Now this right here, feedback item, I like to see someone be able to use a mouse, not a mouse, be the mouse wheel or a value and type in a value. And also it'd be nice to be able to set a Boolean that says, uh, time of day cycle to have it cycle through this while you're playing. So here's the night, the sun, the clouds. Then you go all the way back to night over here. There we go. You got the aurora borealis happening again. And the night ones get kind of dark, and that's how it is in real life. But early dawn, that looks really, really good. Let's see some of the other views of that, right? Here's a view of this river. A view of the river looking north. A river crossing. That's a really fantastic shot. South Road. This is a great one. These are really good. Middle of the river. So you have a combat sequence to see what you got for maps. Here's a map mode. Here's the road view. River bank. Crossing of the river. Fantastic. Totally love it. Temple Ruin. Let's take a look at that. Let's do an overhead view real quick. I'm going to turn the grid down because I'm not a huge fan of the really opaque grid. So we got an entrance. We have this nave. Let's just adjust the lighting. Let's make this a little bit more brighter in the afternoon. Not as many shadows. This is what the view of these ruins look like in the distance. This will give you an idea what it looks like from overhead view. And there is this entrance. So you, you can see just panned over. Like, remember this photograph here? 
So, you know, there's some different views of what these ruins look like. So it's not none of this is faked. This is just all different perspectives of what the ruins look like. So if your players decide to approach from one direction, you know, you have all these different approach directions to show them. Like, wow, it might look like that when you first approach, whereas if someone comes up from this angle, it looks like this, but it's the same exact ruins. And then you can say, well, let's see what the different map views look like. Here's an entrance view. Here's the nave. Here's the back. This would be great for Temple Elemental Evil, wouldn't it? Here's the backyard. Here's the sidewall over here. Here's a road of view. And here's a, a ruins off to the side. So, I mean, the approach angle of the players gives you the ability to uh, change and mix this up to however you want it to be. Really, really cool. I think I've shown almost all of them. Let's do the swamp one. And I'm gonna, once again, I'm going to turn this map mode down a little bit. So let's just take a look at the maps that are available. This is the a, a ground level view. Let's just see what maps we got for this one. We have entrance. That's cool. That's the checkpoint. Here's an entrance. Small little island. Great little bridge. I like the fact that it's diagonal, not all planar. Little hideout. A view of land nearby. Let's see what some of the views are. So here's a view of the swamp. Let's change that time of day and we'll get a little bit more sunny going on. There's a little bit of rain coming down. I'm going to drop this opacity. I'm going to kill the rain. Hey, check the lamp out. Isn't that cool? Oh, that's great. I love that. I love that. They should do more of that. The more location-based lighting of these uh, lamps on wires, the better. So now we got to set this time of day to see what it looks like. Oh, that looks great. Very, very cool. Very cool. I do like how there's a number of the perspectives that are like if you're a thief and you're stealthing and sneaking up, because it's one of the tactics most people do, or view the little miniature island from different angles, or an escape route. This brand, this is really good. Having the location-based lighting really, really uh, adds a lot to it, because that means there's characters or people or enemies there. So that's really, really, really strong. Really like that. Very impressed with that. Let's see what that looks like. Got to remember to click the map mode button. There's some of the lighting little dark when you're when they're making these different lens like this people won't play this in darkness because it's too dark to see so it might be something to consider from a game design perspective or level design perspective is when you create the light sources you may want to have give control of well you can't do that what you could do is make sure you place light sources in all the scenes so that some of the scenes still have strong value when they're even when they're just at night like over here is a complete night but you can't see anything Really awesome. So what have we gone through? Island Fortress, Mountain Passage, Oak Forest, River Crossing. I think we did that one. Do we do River Crossing? I think we did that already, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Forest Campfire, Army Camp. So what do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Did we miss the Oak Forest? Or do we miss the Light Forest? Nope. Here's the swamp. Here's this forest here. See, I'm shuffling the order. Let's put all the water guys down here so I keep them separated. Temple Ruins, River Crossing, Swamp, Island Fortress. Island Fortress, that's down here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm missing one. Which one is it? Well, that's what, Forest Campfire. I didn't have that in here, which we talked about earlier. You saw that already. So, and one thing, this is one thing I really like, is I like how I can change the views, um, switch between the presets I last had on the different locations really quickly. Let's see if that will transfer over. Let's go back to our campfire one I'm gonna do the campfire close view let's just change that to be early evening with the fireplace going because it's so magical and let's see what the map mode for that looks like okay great let's reduce that opacity down great now let's see what happens when we switch to the other map it remembers so it remembers my setup so let's say let's just make this building one have less snow on it Let's have this one have a lot of rain. This one here, let's make it in later in the day. And this is the little swamp camp one. It's a little too dark. Let's make that in the early afternoon. There we go. And let's do this fourth. This is in snow. Let's just change that. Let's make that later in the afternoon. Let's kill the snow. Let's give it a no fog at all. 
And here's our stream from before, which we had like a late afternoon. Let's make that over here about this. And then you had this army camp. So now you got this saved up. I could probably save this, and then I could just start flipping through the settings for all the locations, and then start showing what the view is for every single one. It's going to remember all these settings for these time of day that I set up. Now, when it first loaded, I don't know if you noticed that, when it first loaded the location, it brought in a random cool view. Like, this is a view here. Now, when I go back to this one, it may not remember what my last view was. So it's generating a view real quick. See those textures caching real quick? That's okay. That's not a real problem for me. The DM would want to control this behind the scenes before he would uh, show it to the players anyway. In fact, let's get this wind up a little bit. This one. Very, 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 very cool. So, as you can see, the potential for this kind of stuff is really awesome, really amazing. Um, I strongly encourage you to go check it out. And once again, these guys are on Patreon. Um, support them, and you'll get more of the stuff. And I personally am absolutely, 100%, completely impressed, blown away. I think it's amazing. If you don't think it's amazing, there's something wrong with you. So screw Roll20. <laughs> get a TV. You know, use this application, run it in a window, you know, stream it while you're playing, you know, design adventures around these maps, you know, and maybe later on Paizo and, and Wizards of the Coast will drop their uh, level of we're designing what we want to design. And they'll pair up with guys like this and say, hey, listen, we want you to create, we've got an official adventure coming out. Can you create an Unreal, you know, an Unreal 4 scene that's a real battle map and create an actual dungeon? Right now we're getting a lot of exteriors which is really great. The next stage, the next phase in this kind of development is going to be uh, creation of interiors and Diablo-style maps, interior dungeons, and all that. And I feel sure these guys are going to do that just as well. So we'll talk to you later, and I uh, hope you avoid this in uh, enjoy this inside look at what these guys have put together. It's really, really good. And look for all the links in the description below. Talk to you later.